public support. I also made clear that America would act as part of a broad coalition, and that's exactly what we've done. Can the United States, following these strikes, continue to keep the momentum against ISIS? And more importantly, what will happen on the ground? It's doubtful that these airstrikes were significant enough to destroy ISIS or to wreak the kind of havoc that some of those Arab countries would like to see. But we're going to do what's necessary to take the fight to this terrorist group for the security of the country and the region and for the entire world. But the question now remains as to whether or not this inadvertently strengthens the Syrian government's hand inside Syria, or will this help the moderate Syrian rebel forces that are working to topple the Syrian regime? The U.S. says it will continue its operations, uh, and for now it is enjoying the public and private support of some key Arab allies in the region. Ayman Mohideen, NBC News, London. The Navy-guided missile destroyer USS Arleigh Burke fired a number of Tomahawk missiles against various ISIS targets in eastern Syria. The missiles were part of a coordinated operation, which also included Navy and Air Force fighter jets. Syria said early today it was informed of the U.S. action just hours before it began. And those Tomahawk missiles hitting their targets, video posted on the Internet today, claims to show the aftermath. This footage was reportedly shot in western Syria. Most of the airstrikes hit ISIS positions in eastern Syria, but a human rights group said three positions of the al-Nusra front were hit in Idlib. Seven militants and eight civilians were supposedly killed in the strikes. NBC News cannot verify the authenticity of this video. And the unintended consequences of war, hundreds of Syrian refugees flooding into Turkey after police there opened up a crossing point. UN officials say more than 138,000 refugees have crossed into Turkey over the past few days. Officials are preparing for as many as 400,000 to enter Turkey. Pentagon officials say last night's airstrikes are the beginning of a credible and sustained campaign to destroy ISIS and the Khorasan group, a group that may sound new but is actually a cell of al-Qaeda militants operating in northwestern Syria. Officials say the Khorasan group was close to executing an attack in Europe or the U.S. In terms of the Khorasan group, which is a network of seasoned al-Qaeda veterans. These strikes were undertaken to disrupt imminent attack plotting against the United States and Western targets. Five Arab nations joined in the overnight strike. Officials say the attacks were successful, but that it's too early to identify how the airstrikes have affected the Islamic militants. Although the military didn't include the Syrian government in the airstrikes, they did let the Assad regime know they'd be waging the offensive. A spokesman for the regime said on state-run TV he was notified hours before the strikes began in the form of a letter from Secretary of State John Kerry. It was delivered by Iraq's foreign minister. Meanwhile, closer to home, people living near the San Pedro River are dealing with a possible environmental mess. Officials in northern Mexico have issued a bi-national alert over contamination from a copper mine that spilled into a waterway which flows into Arizona. The Sonoran government says contamination from the Buena Vista del Cobre mine in the city of Cananea has made it into the San Pedro River. Officials haven't said how much leaked or what was in the contaminants. Civil protection officials are urging residents to avoid using the local water. People living in St. David and